what have you done since that time to prepare for the job, to better familiar, familiarize yourself with county government or the home rule charter? Uh, as far as uh, the charter, I've obviously been studying that and looking at, at some of the aspects of it. Uh, but uh, main focus, I think, is, is really going in there and, and with an open set of eyes and, and, and an open mind to, to really hone in on a, a hiring a good county executive because I think that's going to be, you know, the most important job function at this point in time. Um, we definitely need a, a good leader in there, and especially being the initial county executive. Uh, that person's got to be upstanding, you know, ethical. Um, somebody that's also going to be for the residents of this county. And do you have more thoughts on, on that manager process? Or you um, at this point, I, I really think it's going to be something that you, you really have to look at when you get into that office. Um, I haven't been to a lot of, I haven't actually been to any of those meetings, uh, the transition committee meetings at this point in time, because obviously I don't want to taint myself right now with, with any of that process. Uh, I will look at their recommendations. but. Going in as elected official, you know, ultimately we're the ones responsible to make that decision as far as who's, you know, how this county is going to be shaped and, and, and move forward. So, you know, that transition committee, they can do as much work as they want. However, the, you know, new council members, the 11, uh, will actually have to be the ones to make that decision and ultimately hold the responsibility to, uh, you know, pick that county executive and make sure that the ship is steered, you know, properly. Okay. And I have been asking other uh, candidates about the transition committee meetings, mm -hmm. uh, whether they've been attending. You say you haven't, and that's not a scheduling conflict as much as a conscious decision that was well, part of it? Well, that too. It's also a scheduling conflict at this point, since I, recently I had switched jobs, uh, uh -huh. and I'm working actually later now, so uh -huh. my schedule is you know, pretty much 11.30 to 8 most of the days of the week, except on Tuesdays. Do you then, based on what you might hear or read, do you have a sense of where the transition committee is in the process? Are, are you comfortable with, with its pace, or do you feel that there might be some things that are dropped? Well, like I said, you know, at this point, I, I, they can do whatever they want to do um, because, you know, that, that's going to be up to them. Uh, however, you know, once elected, we'll become part of that transition committee. And then uh, come January, when we get sworn in, like I said, that's when we, we, we're the ones that are ultimately going to be responsible to, uh, you know, steer the ship and make sure it's steered right because, you know, I'm not, I'm, personally, I'm not going to rubber stamp anything that they've done. Um, you know, like I said, I'm going to go in there with an open set of eyes, look at the candidates that, that have applied for the position, and then uh, make sure we choose the right person. Uh, if elected, how much time do you expect to dedicate to the council post? Well, as much time as I need, you know. I, I'm sure I can make accommodations at work during the day. Um, but this, it, it is definitely, you know, one of the most critical functions, like I said. It, I think it's going to be a reflection upon all of us to make sure everything is done properly, openly. Uh, you know, I don't want to really use the word transparent because it's, it's, it's been overused, but uh, keep it transparent in a sense. Uh, do you feel it's appropriate if you're one of those council members to to maintain a daily presence in the courthouse, or do you think you'd have a preferred way to be accessible to the public and, and to the employees I, of the county? I don't feel that I'd be there every single day. I mean, it is a part-time position, but you know, uh, one thing I have an advantage of is, you know, of course, having a father who's a commissioner at this point, and they use him sometimes as a resource to find out what's going on from from the inside. I mean, we talk once in a while about the inner workings and, and everything else that goes on there. But, uh, and it helps. You know, you need somebody that's going to be uh, abreast of all the different situations and different scenarios and what can happen in the county. You don't realize how many services Luzerne County actually provides to the public. And uh, I, I don't know if, you know, a lot of people realize that when they were voting on this charter, um, you know, as far as the leadership that they have in there currently. Uh, I would have preferred the three commissioner structure. Um, getting a board of 11 is, can be a little challenging at times because you're going to have 11 different opinions and 11 different voices. So, you know, realistically, meetings could go a lot longer in the future. 
you know, they could be hours instead of, I mean, they're hours now sometimes, but imagine 11 opinions going uh, across the table and, and um, making those decisions. So, you know, hopefully we don't get caught up in any red tape and, and um, we'll, be all, we'll all be able to sit down and actually provide some solutions for this, you know, for Luzerne County. When you say some of the services, people might not realize all the county services that are offered. Are there some in particular you're thinking of when you say that? Well, I mean, you, I mean, you look at the day-to-day -day services. You have children and youth. You have other services just like, you know, EMA, 911, all those different departments that, uh, you know, the three commissioners are in charge of. And uh, you know, roads and bridges, I mean, you have a lot of different responsibilities as a county that, that you know, people have to look at and, and you know really even with this this past flooding issue you know that that's an issue I mean I, I was looking at from a big picture perspective too I mean you, you basically had the three commissioners go in there take the reins and make sure EMA was doing its job and it could have been a lot worse than what it was you know if people didn't understand you know how the pumping systems work and, and you know I mean there's like 14 different systems and uh, you know, having somebody experienced in there, like my father, for instance, just, just to see uh, what was going on with those pumps up and down the river. I mean, you need somebody in there with that experience. And, and when, when we go and choose an executive, we want to make sure that they're, they're actually able to, to look at everything and not just be bogged down with the day-to-day -day operations of, of the county. Uh, they're going to have to get out and, and really go out there and talk to their community, see what they need, um, see how they can help them. And, and, you know, imagine if, if this scenario plays out next year, if we potentially can get flooding again in the future, how is the dynamic going to change at that point in time with uh, a council of 11 and one, one county executive? So, you know, we want to make sure we get the right executive in there that really knows what's going on from not just a managerial perspective, but also a people perspective and a community perspective. And, and hopefully somebody with, with, you know, some brains on how to, <laughs> in operations because they're going to have to pick some good leadership to make sure that the other agencies and other departments around the county are doing its job, too. You know, to, so we, you know, everything yeah, goes smoothly or transitions smoothly. Uh, if elected, would you vote to approve the hiring of a relative to a county authority board or commission? Uh, absolutely not. Yeah, you know, plus, it's unethical to do so. So, you know, that, that's something that's forbidden. Uh, do you uh, feel you have an area of expertise that you would bring to the council, uh, skills of some sort, um, numbers or budgeting, a legal background, a love of research, experience in negotiations, those types of things? I mean, I, I think my strong points are being very analytical. I look at everything, you know, and, and then basically uh, look at process and workflow, seeing how we can make things more efficient. Uh, I would love to get more things online, uh, you know, more of a self-service portal on Luzerne County's website. I mean, the website doesn't change much, but, you know, many times there's a lot of white space on there that you really can't find a lot of things. I think make it more user-friendly, more interactive. Um, since there won't be three commissioners, I mean, now's the time to step it up and make sure that, you know, we're using technology to its proper means. Put everything online uh, and let people utilize those resources. Is there a department that you think that falls naturally to, or, or an individual that's there now? Or do you think well, I mean, I think, think it has to d deal with, you know, their IT department, and also, uh, you know, maybe the commissioners aren't as technologically advanced as I am. I mean, most of my career is an IT, you know, I come from an IT background, um, but I veer off into other things, too, you know, besides that. But, uh, um, you know, I've worked for corporations that, you know, you really didn't have a say on how things go, but uh, you wish you would have because um, when I was doing desktop support, I'd talk to everybody from upper management on down. And what you do, you know, you see, a, you learn the business from the inside, even though you might not be running the business, might not have anything to do with how the business operates besides fixing their technology. But you learn all the, you know, the terminology, technical standpoint, you know, uh, the workflow processes and whatnot. And uh, it, it, from an op like from my eyes, you know, there were things that I've seen in the past where you know we could have made improvements within the places that I've worked. Um, they never came to to myself really to 
they asked me, well, how can we make this department better? You know, you talk to everybody from senior management on down, but, you know, uh, I'm just the guy that fixes your computer, so but what do I know, you know? But when you interact with everybody, I, you know, I'm a people person, so I go out there and I talk to people and uh, pick their brain, and then, you know, you, you hear the complaints from the top and, and, and the bottom, and then you, you sort of take it all together, mesh it together, and then, uh, Really, we could have probably offered them a lot of good solutions, you know, just being the eyes and the ears on the ground. Okay. You, know. and, uh, you need some foot soldiers out there. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, same type of question, but not necessarily a job skill as much as a, what you consider to be a characteristic or a personal mm -hmm. attribute. Do you, do you think you have an attribute that you'd be able to bring to this council that would be particularly helpful? Well, hopefully a sense of balance and, and you know, um, and not arguing with people, you know, just a matter of just sitting down and talking with people. I mean, I know uh, a lot of people have their political differences, you know, Republican, Democrat. It's just when you're in this office, you, you've got to really sit down and you look at it from a people perspective. Um, we're going to have to provide solutions, you know. I mean, we've got to get the county out of debt. Um, we've got to get the ship steered, you know, right and, uh, and, and make it uh, a lot better. And, and definitely try to make Luzerne County a lot better so we can actually create some decent paying jobs around here that are family sustaining, you know, and um, hopefully bring in some decent companies here too. I mean, we've had enough black guys over the past few years. I think it's time that we rebuild our community and uh, get together and try to come up with some good solutions, you know. I mean, I know in the past we've, we've had other, I mean, we participate in other events in the area and, and especially with like the chamber and the, uh, I remember one program with, where we view this area sometimes as a negative. Well, whatever happened to that program, you know, where we're looking at things from a more positive perspective and trying to work together to solve our issues here. I mean, we, we have a lot of infrastructure issues, I mean, that need to be resolved. You know, roads need to be fixed, bridges need to be fixed, uh, communities need to be rebuilt right now. Um, we have a huge undertaking, but you know we're not all going to get it done unless we, we pitch in and everybody helps out. You know, uh, time for the bickering and, and the arguing needs to stop. And uh, like I said, we need to just hit hit the ground running and, and just be able to talk with our, our fellow council people and uh, you know provide the the right solutions. One of this group's biggest challenges, obviously, is going to be on the financial end of things, mm -hmm. creating a budget that's going to work. Do you have specific ideas for where money can be saved, or on the flip side of that, uh, are there areas where you think the county's missing out on revenues for one reason or another? Uh, at this point, uh, it's something where I would have to really dive into the numbers and, and really look at them. You know, I, I don't look at the budget at this point. Uh, it's up to the commissioners right now to come up with a budget for next year, and then we'll look at that. And you know, once once we're in there, make make that determination. I don't want to you know, make any promises I can't keep right now, so. Uh, what do you feel is the county's responsibility for funding uh, outside organizations, things such as public libraries? Well, I mean, libraries are definitely important, you know. Um, they do provide an educational outlet for people. I, you know, that's something that I am support, you know, in support of is make sure the libraries stay open, you know, and uh, I mean, we'll, we'll definitely have to look at every program, though, and, and find ways to either come up with money or uh, find a way to do something f with, uh, you know, those outlets, either through fundraising means or, or however to, to make more funds available for them. I want to go back to what you said about attracting businesses. Mm -hmm. How does the county do that other than, you mentioned the perception issue, but is, it, is there some other role that the county plays in bringing? Well, I, I, I think what they need to do is really uh, Get, get even some of the local community leaders together in some of the municipalities. You know, and sometimes people want to build and you might be crossing municipal lines because they might need property from, from two lines. And I know everybody tends to have their own little fiefdoms at times, you know, and, and one may not want it, the other one wants it, and then they're fighting, you know, in, in our communities. And uh, th that has to stop, you know, I mean, in some places, you, you know, you have mayors that are only like, you're only the mayor of 3,000 people, but, you know, you have to look at it from a big picture perspective with all the municipalities in, in Luzerne County. We all need to work together to try to consolidate services, too. Um, you know, even if it gets down to police and fire protection, 
uh, we try to foster that and, and, and save money and, and get and, and maybe even get together as a consortium and have better buying power, you know, whether even be office supplies, for instance, or you have to look at everything, um, even from maybe even a healthcare perspective too, you know, and uh, I, I know it might be something that the unions might balk at, but uh, you have to, like I said, we'll have to throw every idea out there uh, once we get in there and, and look at it and say, you know, how can we make this better? And more cost effective. You know, even if we save ten dollars, it's ten dollars that you could be using for something else. Mm -hmm. uh, on the issue of uh, operating the county government itself, mm -hmm. uh, a couple questions about the, the benefits packages there. Uh, what do you think is a, a reasonable fringe benefit package for county employees? Things such as the number of sick days, number of vacation days. I, I you know, would love to see everybody work a forty-hour work week, um, just like a regular corporation. You have to put in forty. Uh, to get your full benefits, I think that everybody should should have to pay a little bit toward their health care. Um, once again, I think maybe they can go in and look at the health care issue and, and maybe go in as a group uh, with some other areas as a consortium and, and try to bring those costs down. I know where I work currently, I mean, I have had a good opportunity to choose from different plans that, that were offered to me. And really, I mean, the, for the for what I'm paying every two weeks, it's not that much. I'm getting good good benefits, and I'm happy with the you know medical dental vision. And so, what if I have to put fifty dollars toward it every couple weeks? You know, that's that's something that has to be done. We all have to pitch in. You know, it's either that or, or the county goes belly up because of, of you know, administrative costs Where are you or salary and benefits. Uh, currently, I actually RCN. So I had switched jobs since uh, we last spoke. I'm not familiar with RCN. Uh, cable company. Oh, um, if elected, is there a particular issue that you bring to this council, something that you feel passionate about or that you think other people are talking about? Um, so some candidates have raised issues about natural gas issues or taxation issues. Or do you feel it's more appropriate for the county manager to bring the issues to the council? Well, I mean, the county manager is definitely going to be the, the figurehead. He's going to, he or she's going to be the leader of the county. However, you know, uh, well, I don't know if the, the gas issues really is as prevalent in Luzerne County as it is up north. So um, I think we have other issues that we, we should be worrying about besides the gas tax here in Luzerne County. Um, yeah, I, I'm a person that enjoys nature myself. I mean, I definitely want to see a clean environment. I'm an outdoorsman myself. I go hunting. Uh, usually once a year. So, you know, I'm out there and, and, and uh, out, out in the environment. I mean, you know, we, I don't want to see it full of garbage and, and, um, and polluted. So, you know, that, that is something that you know, we have to strike a balance with, too. But uh, I don't find that the gas tax issue is a big issue at this point, not in Luzerne County. We're in Susquehanna County or, or somewhere up north, and it would be a little bit different. Uh, if you're a member of this council, uh, mm -hmm. would you want to serve as its chairperson, or if not, what characteristics would you be looking for in the chair? I, I probably would look for somebody that's more experienced uh, as a chairperson, and you know, if, if the dynamic you know, happens where my father and myself get elected, I would like to see him become chairperson, but obviously I could not vote on that because of being in you know, a relation. So. so you would not vote on that? Right? No, no, you can't. Yeah. yeah, that's a conflict of interest. I mean, but I, I would be definitely an advocate for, for him to become like the, maybe county council chair. Right. Uh, there are those people who express concerns, I think, about, oh my goodness, two urbans on the same council. How do you respond to that, that uh, criticism sort of or concern? I have to, I mean, he, he and I both live separate lives. We both, you know, live on our own. I mean, I've been out on my own since I was about 20. Uh, have my own place, have my own life. Um, he doesn't make any of my decisions. He makes his own, and, and I make my own. You know, I'm, I'll be 38 pretty soon, so uh, it's up to the people whether or not they want to hire us, you know, by electing us. Um, 
you know, I've been involved in politics probably just as long or longer than he, he has. I've been elected to the Republican State Committee uh, actually since 1998. Uh, People may forget that I've ran for mayor of Wilkes-Barre, ran for city council in the past, uh, ran for state rep twice. So, you know, I have a lot of political experience, and plus, uh, Republican chairman in this area, you know, within the what's considered a sixth district or in the 121st district. So, um, you know, I'm out there just as much as he is. Uh, I have, you know, I know a whole different group of people than he knows. So. Uh, you know, but we run into the same people sometimes. And what are you doing in this campaign to get your name out there in the weeks ahead? I, I just I've been meeting people more privately. Uh, you know, I haven't really made a lot of noise this year. Um, my work schedule is a little, like I said, it's a little bit uh, challenging at this point in time. But uh, hopefully, in the future or the short near future, that'll change. If you are elected, how will your work schedule impact? Oh, that I'll, I'll, I'll get that corrected. Okay. Yeah, that's not a problem. I have, I have a great manager that I'm sure we can work things out. Role model. Yeah. <laughs> awesome manager. Um, when you say meeting per, uh, people personally, is this like a door to door thing? Yeah, more door to door. Events, and, and I haven't really gone to too many events, but uh, it's more door to door. And then we've actually, I, I, we've held a couple different events, though, within our own uh, Republican committee more recently down on, on Main Street. So we had a, a tailgate party, that we, an annual uh, event that we do for a fundraiser for our district. Uh, we do actually give some money to some local candidates too within in the confines of the district. So, um, How much do you expect to spend on the campaign? Not much. <laughs> Not much at all. Under I mean, two, I, under one? Uh, I would probably say under two fifty. Yeah, I don't. I don't plan on spending a lot. Two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. Under two hundred fifty dollars. Right. Uh, for the primary, I didn't even spend that much. So it just uh, a lot of it is also based on name recognition. You and, said you've had dual purpose signs. You're using those again. Right. Yeah. The, the signs are still out there. You know, those signs were bought and paid for years ago. Uh, many, many years ago, and then we just recycle them, pick them up, the ones that don't get stolen, and uh, reuse them. I mean, that's just part of our, our nature of being frugal. Most people, you know, I mean, you look at a lot of signs today, and half the time you, you're driving by them, you can't read them because there's too much information on them, or the lettering's too small. So most people just remain, you know, they just remember the name. Are you expecting other candidates to do a, a bigger push in terms of radio or television? I'm sure that there's, you know, every candidate has their own opportunity to, to get their name out. But uh, I think we have a pretty good last name, and um, elections sometimes tend to be more popularity contests and people that they know versus that they don't know. I mean, I, I mean myself, I don't know everybody personally that, that's running. Um, it, it is a lot to, to really look at, you know, when, when you're. Uh, running for this office and you have over 22 people running, uh, there's going to be people that you don't know and, and the personalities that we don't know. So I mean, I think, you know, the paper ultimately has a responsibility too to, to make sure that everybody comes in here and, and, and really you guys do a thorough interview too <laughs> to make sure that, that, you know, the right people are endorsed. Um, something that I really don't, like I said, I don't know all the personalities. I probably would like to get to know them, but if, if some of them get elected, we're going to have to sit down and get to, to know each other and work at those personalities. Did you have concerns about the primary at all, or did you see inconsistencies or, or things that you felt weren't appropriate uh, in this particular race, or as far as you know what things? I didn't really see any uh, improprieties going on, so I mean, that, that, at least not where I was. I was in the Heights most of the day. Um, where I live. Well, I just, I, I guess I meant more the campaign overall, not just on election day, but uh, the tone of it, the... It was actually pretty quiet. I mean, I, 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 probably surprisingly very quiet for such a big race. Um, I don't know if that's some people's strategy or not, but uh, there, like I said, once again, a lot of people that are running, I, I think it's going to be very community-based where you live. Geographically, uh, people are going to vote those individuals uh, 
that they feel that they know from their own communities. I mean, I know myself and Harry Haas, I mean, we, we pull a lot of votes in Wilkes-Barre. My father pulls a lot of votes in Wilkes-Barre, but we're, we live here in Wilkes-Barre. Now, obviously, there's other communities out there, you know, all the way down to Nescapec, Hazleton, those areas um, where, you know, I know we, myself, I have the last name to, that, that helps. You know, I don't have to come in first place everywhere to, to win the election. And uh, if you come in second or third, you're still going to win. So. Uh, obviously, there's, a, there's always a certain amount of interest in the county's operations. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be amplified, we expect, at the start of next year, given this new group that's coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think is the appropriate way for council to communicate with news outlets, not just the Times Leader, but all the news outlets? Do you think it's best to have a designated spokesperson? Or should each council member be out there talking to the to the meeting? That, I guess it's going to be dependent on who, who the 11 are and, uh, it, and the executive. Um, maybe they want to hire a spokesperson and they might pr present that to us. So I guess that remains to be seen at this point in time. Uh, I would definitely like to see one message go out and not 11 opinions or 12 opinions, but you're probably going to have that in just the way the nature of the business is. You can, you can never prevent anybody from speaking, and then you, you know, you'll see all sides of the issue. Have you joined with other candidates out there in terms of forming a, a coalition of some sort? Or? Uh, not necessarily, no. I do my own thing, you know, and uh, obviously being a Republican, I'm out there working for the Republican candidates, so. But uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's, you know, uh, not my choice, not my decision, it's the, the electorate, you know, they're the people that are going to really decide who, who's going to get in and who's going to lead this county going forward. Questions from the group at this point? Uh, last question I've been asking is whether you feel that this has been, uh, uh, are, are you satisfied with this endorsement interview that we asked the appropriate questions and you oh, had sure. a chance to tell us what you wanted to? Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, I, it, it actually is it's beneficial because you, you really get to know us uh, as the candidates, um, I definitely appreciate that. And, you know, thank you for, for doing it. Anything that we didn't ask about, or anything that we did touch on, but you particularly want to Well, emphasize? I think, you know, right now it's just a matter of going in and just getting elected, do the job, pick the, the right county manager. I think uh, that manager, uh, whoever he or she is, I would definitely. Uh, I'm, I'm a person that would want their names put out there. In public, mm -hmm. um, because if it was an elected position, the finalists or all of them, I, I would say all of them. Because I mean, not necessarily even just the finalists. Because if if it was an elect uh, elected position, your name would be out there from day one. You know, as soon as you went up to, went up to the courthouse to pick up those petitions, your name would be on that list. You know, so there would be no difference at that point. I mean, this is we want to keep it open. I. I you know, don't want to see any backroom deals going on in the county. Uh, want to make sure that they're they're all up to speed. And like I said, everything is done above board, openly, ethically, um, and just you know make sure that this this transition goes smoothly. That we get the right person in there. And I can't stress that enough. You know, that is definitely going to be critical. I don't want anybody in there that that may be cutting a deal with somebody right now. You know. Um, I want to see the list of names. I want to be able to pull everybody in, interview them myself, and make that determination who I best feel is going to do the right job uh, and do the job, you know, uh, like I said, above board. Like I said, we've had enough black guys, we've had enough corruption and scandal in this county to last us a lifetime. Uh, but, you know, that time period is over. It's time to move ahead, forge ahead, get Luzerne County back on track, you know, get it back in the black, and uh, make sure that we run efficiently and smoothly and make sure we're providing all the necessary services that, that we can f for all the residents and make it a lot easier for them to have access to, to those services. Um, and to make sure that every county employee is doing their job, that's all. And we're not going in there with a heavy hand, but we just want to make sure that, that everything is run right, and even from a man managerial perspective, and get the right managers in there to, to do their job. I mean. I'm not an expert in everything. I'm never going to, you know, claim to be one. But at least, if you 
get the right people in there with the right mindset and the right credentials. Uh, you know, you surround yourself with good good leaders and good managers. You know, you, you should see uh, the county do a lot better.